to reference or not to reference? When do I use? Why reference? can't I draw anything? When do I not? Why am I not proving not to reference? I know you have a lot of pressing questions and that's what I'm here to do for you. That's why I'm here. Worry not, I will be holding your little tiny little hand the entire time, just like this. As we talk a little bit about using reference, specifically the process of making this sticker right here. This sticker is gorgeous and there's a lot of good meat behind the making of this sticker. But actually I have like six new stickers that dropped today, what? And most importantly, my magnum opus, my new art book is out today. This book is a collection of my favorite people drawings that I've made over the past year year and a bit. If you know anything about me, you know that I love going out and sketching people in cafes, in markets, and parks. So this book means a lot to me. And you could support me and buy today on my shop, link down in the description, as well as my new stickers. Yes, this is a book that you need on your shelf. And yes, super cheap worldwide shipping. Need I, need I say more? But why we're here is because of this sticker right here. So let's get started on talking about the process behind it in the meat of this video, which is references. So let us begin. Why do we even use references? because we don't want to go in blindly. Reference is a guide on your artistic journey. Using reference can make your art look more believable, more grounded, because it's based on perception of real life. Right now you have images in your head of what you think a face looks like, what you think horses look like, what you think a building looks like. But that's not actually what they look like. That's just like your interpretation. By using reference, you're gonna have a much more grounded reality. And once you start understanding reference and building up your visual library, that's when you can deviate from reference and be creative with it. So let's pretend it is last month and I am starting to come up with this sticker idea. Let's start by finding a good reference. What do I want? I want a portrait. I want maybe butterflies, maybe some flowers in her hair. And that's kind of the general idea I have so far. So I go to good old Pinterest and I type in portrait butterfly flowers. And that's, that's where we begin. A lot of these pieces are really interesting and dynamic. I'm looking for a portrait that has simple lighting, an interesting angle of the faces. And already I'm interested in these pieces where we have some butterflies in the hair, some florals in the hair. I think that's really cool. I really like the shapes here and I think it's cool where the hand is also interacting with the face having a butterfly over the eye. I don't necessarily like the shadows. I kind of want a more neutral lighting scenario. And this piece is really cool. We have huge florals in the hair and I think that's really dope. But this piece right here is kind of a compromise where there's a lot less florals in the hair. I really like the angle of the face. I'm gonna go ahead and use this piece as my main reference. So first of all, I'm avoiding blindly following references without any critical thinking. I don't wanna copy this piece. I wanna, you know, take what I can from it, learn what I love about it, and also decide what I don't like about it and what I don't wanna bring into my final piece. The first thing I'm drawn to is how the chin is angled this way. I think that's really cool because it is direct contrast of the shoulders, which have a different angle, and I think that's awesome. Another thing that I really like is the shape of the hair and it's a little subtle but if you look closely it is not just a big circle we actually have some angles to this hair that i can see and i really want to utilize those angles i also like that there's these big florals but i don't like how they're all so evenly spaced from one another and i also don't like how these flowers are pretty big and it's almost as big as the face. The face is just a little bit bigger. So I really want the flowers to be either very small or a lot bigger than the face. And finally, I also really like how the shape of this shirt is kind of creating a triangle shape in her chest. So I kind of want to keep that overall shape. I really like the angle of this hand, but I don't want to keep it down here because I don't want to make a really long sticker. I think I'm going to bring the hand up here. So now I've analyzed my reference, I'm gonna start sketching. Yes, I forgot to record the sketching process, but don't worry about it. So I made a really loose sketch with my favorite aspects of the reference used. So I'm, you know, making an interesting shape in the hair. I also, instead of these big flowers, I wanna make a focal point of a big butterfly in her hair with like smaller flowers around it. I also put flowers around her more to kind of close the shape up to make it more interesting. I have the angle of her jaw on her shoulders and I also brought her hand up. So in general, my goal is to kind of make this overall like shield shape, family crest shape that I have here. And that's, that's kind of what I want my sticker to be contained in. It's asymmetrical, I think it's dynamic and it's a good start. With my colors, what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna color pick. 
I really suggest never color picking from references or studies. You're not gonna learn anything from color picking and you're gonna be a slave to your reference. You're not gonna feel that you can be creative and push from it. And at the forefront is always artistic growth. So never color pick. So I'm looking at my reference and I'm seeing what are my favorite colors in this piece. She has a beautiful rich skin color, which I want to keep. And I also love the orange and yellow in her hair. And those are my two jumping off points for what colors I want to choose. So this is my general thumbnail of what I want this piece to look like. With the butterfly being in her hair and the yellow flowers surrounding her. With that overall shield shape that I'm looking for. So now it's time to start the fun part. But before we start, let me tell you a little bit about today's sponsor. We all know and love ExpressVPN. What better way to keep you safe when you use unencrypted or unsecure Wi-Fi networks like public Wi-Fi? Literally any one of the thousands of people also connected to that same Wi-Fi network can easily steal your information like passwords, account logins, credit card numbers, etc. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom and not closing the door. Anyone can just like walk past and take a peek at you. VPNs actually allow you to change your online location. So you can continue your weird to online searches without anyone knowing it comes from you. Okay, 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 but did you know that depending where you live, depending what country you live in, Netflix shows you different shows? But my favorite reason to use ExpressVPN is so I can finally watch Lord of the Rings instead of being trapped in an eternal hell of watching Is It Cake 2. It's so easy to just change my country to Turkey, which is like one of the only places that Netflix has Lord of the Rings, and finally enjoy my little Smeagol. Go to expressvpn.com slash JackieVPN and get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Now let's get back to the video. So the first thing I wanna do for this piece is I really wanna get the anatomy correct. And I have had a lot of time to understand this angle, this particular angle. I've done a lot of studies in this angle before, so I understand the anatomy behind it. So you really don't want to overlook the importance of understanding anatomy. If you're just going into a reference and copying the angles without really understanding the planes of the face, then the piece could look flat or it won't quite look like that correct angle. I just dragged in a previous um, study that I've done before in a similar angle and I brought it in so I could really understand the, the way that I have approached painting this like particular angle in the past. Because what I really want to do in this piece is not have just simple flat colors, I wanted to have like a really rendered piece with all of the realism and brush strokes that come with it. Sure, you can use references to nail proportions and details, but if you don't understand why those muscles or the bone structure or the planes of the face look the way that they do, then your drawings can come out flat or uncanny or not quite looking the way that a real face would behave. So take the time to study the why behind the drawing that you're making and it'll make your characters look a lot more convincing and 3D in, in like a more real way. Which leads me to my next point, don't forget to inject your personal style into your art when looking at reference. Although I'm using this face to understand the anatomy from this angle and the overall shapes and the idea, I'm not, you know, doing it a one for one. I'm very much injecting my personal style into it. I'm exaggerating parts where I can get away with it and making it look like it came from my hand rather than like tracing a piece or something. I'm stylizing the hair shapes, I'm stylizing how the hands work, how the colors look, and a little bit of the face so it doesn't look so realistic. I wanted to put in a lot of purples, you know, directly contrasting the yellows and oranges of her, of her flowers and stuff. I wanted the eyes to be also pretty stylized, like the eyelashes, I didn't just make like, strokes of eyelashes, I made them very geometric and sharp. As same with the eyeliner on her eyes, I wanted it to, to have a real big pop. I love, I love doing a colored eyeshadow. And the first thing I usually work on is lips because that's the thing I'm very comfortable with. Lips are, they're hard to do, everything's hard to do, but the lips is the easiest part for me and the thing that I see best to begin with. I need immediate satisfaction in what I do or I'm gonna give up easily. So by making the lips rendered and look pretty right at the start, then I don't have to worry if this piece is gonna come out. And I'm using a lot of the lasso tool because I want a lot of interesting like angles. I want it to be very like angular, this piece. 
you know, I want like parts of the nose to be very angular. So it can kind of have a geometric feel. I think that that would be really cool. And on the reference on the right, I'm seeing a lot of different hues in the skin. So I'm kind of trying to incorporate that into the skin I'm making now. On the reference on the left, it's really hard to see all the hue variations and skin tones from a photo. You really have to decide what is a little bit more purple, what is a little bit more green, what's a little bit more blue, and you really have to exaggerate it to what works in your piece. So I'm treating this reference as a starting point. I'm not using it as a blueprint. You know, it's like it's like your mom's recipe. It's clear and it's to the point, but I don't want my cake to be exactly like my mom's cake. I wanna make my own cake. I want it for everyone to know that I've made it. I'm taking a lot of creative liberties. I'm taking a look at my reference. I'm understanding its core elements. And then I'm letting my imagination really take over the rest. Something that I learned like a little bit recently was, you know, adding some really bright highlights to dark shadows around and I think that makes the shadows pop and makes it look like it's a skin tone. It makes it look more vibrant and like there's blood behind the skin. And I'm adding a lot of purple highlights as well and some greens and some blues. I want it to kind of be all over the color spectrum. I don't want it to be just a, a purple piece. So I'm kind of experimenting, which is another good point. Don't be afraid to experiment. You're missing out on artistic growth by not experimenting. When you experiment, you learn things that you couldn't have learned by just following the references. You know, you see, well, would this colors kind of work? Would these shapes kind of work within the reference I'm using? And sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no. You know, how, how are you gonna know until you try? I also think that adding a rim light of blue in contrast of the black kind of separates it from the black and gives it a little interesting touch, a little something different. Even though the face is very angular and I'm using a lot of like the hard angle lasso tool, I want the hair to follow like an angular shape, but I also want it to feel really textured and have it feel like it could be this really tight curly hair. Here's another point, don't just use one reference. In this piece, I'm using multiple references for multiple different types of things on her. So I'm using a separate reference for the butterfly. I also use different references for the flowers. And I'm using two references for her face angles, for the colors of her face. And I'm not following it word for word. This butterfly, I'm using some green hues and some yellows and some purples to kind of, you know, to tie in with the multiple colors of the character's face as well. And I wanted the flowers around her to be more floral. So I'm just stamping in some basic, you know, textures of what these flowers can start as. And then later on, I kind of detail it a little more. Just like with this hand, I started off with a very basic shape and then now I'm going in and cleaning up that silhouette. And here's me starting trying to understand what these flowers look like. Don't be afraid of doing a lot of variations. Your first flower you ever draw is not gonna be a good flower. I used to draw flowers a lot more, but I'm pretty rusty. So I draw this like multiple times before, before I decide I don't like it or before I decide to try something new. The flower that I had in her hair, it was way too busy. Butterfly was supposed to be the main event. So I tried a couple versions, didn't like it, ended up putting that big flower around her wrist. And then I moved these smaller flowers around, adding other little details in the hair. I don't want the flowers to get lost. I want them to stay as the focal point and I want the hair to be strong enough that it stays on its own, that it doesn't get lost or too crowded. Right now I'm just cleaning up the edges, like the edges is so important in the sticker. It's a die cut sticker, so all the edges are gonna be those really tight, like white borders. I'm very focused on, you know, how much things are popping out, like that pinky, for example. Is that pinky popping out too much? Do I have to have something behind it? Do I have it closer to the hand? These are all things I'm thinking about because you know, if this was an illustration just for, you know, a digital illustration, then I don't have to think about that. But because it's a sticker, um, you know, you have to focus on the medium that you're creating this for. And because I'm focusing on making this a sticker with different effects, I'm adding some like white pieces because those can be really cool as like a glitter effect. Throwing in some blues throughout the piece, I don't want it to just be yellow and white and orange. I want a lot of the colors throughout the piece to, to go all around the piece to make it really cohesive. And this last step is like liquefying the heck out of it. I merged everything and I really want it to look good. I feel like I didn't quite make the angles work. Like the back eye looks too small. In the end, honestly, like maybe anatomy could use a little bit of work and the sticker's only gonna be this big. So I wasn't like freaking out about it. 
So by the end of the piece, I stopped looking at my reference because I didn't want it to hinder me. I want my piece to speak for itself and because I got the thing I wanted out of it, which was the main idea and the anatomy of the angle of the face, I didn't need to look at it anymore. I want it to grow on my own from it. So don't forget to balance reference with imagination. A lot of my advice is very similar. It's very much like reference is a guiding point and then the rest is your creativity. And that's basically what it is. But I hope hearing about the thought process and kind of the ideas behind how I interpreted my reference helps you get an idea of, of how you can do the same. And that's the entire process of how I use reference to get to this sticker right here. Let me know if you learned something and let me know which one's your favorite sticker out of the new six. And let me know if you're gonna get my book. First 30 books ordered are signed by me. That's pretty cool. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. That would be so neat. That would be very cool. And I'll catch you next time. See ya. Bye.